Department for Transport has issued its latest update of its controversial traffic light system for hopeful travellers. But experts have warned that travel remains in a government arm lock after key destinations such as Mexico have been uh, moved to the red list and the cost of mandatory quarantine hotels will increase. So uh, is uh, an overseas holiday worth it yet. It's a big question, isn't it? Transport Secretary Grant Shapps joins us now from Hertfordshire. A very good morning to you. Um, I know you've, you know, you've always sort of talked about caution and, and possibly erring on the side of caution, even if you have holidays booked and so on. But of course, now policy is changing. The, you know, Spain and France are now on the amber list. Um, what is that signal saying to, to families this morning uh, about what the government thinks about holidays because I think some people are still worried um, about what happens if you do go and then it ends up being on an amber watch list or a red list and you have to quarantine when you come back. Yeah, well, I, I suppose the answer is we've come a long way in the last year, year and a half since all this started. And unlike last year, lots of people are vaccinated now and that's enabling people to be able to start traveling again as other countries except people who are fully vaccinated as well. So unlike last year where the rules were changing every week. Um, we've now got the set of rules in place. This will, this, tra this traffic light, uh, countries in different colours will stay for the next three weeks uh, unless something exceptional and unexpected happens. Uh, and we, we, we very much hope that's not the case. People can go away, enjoy the holidays, not be looking over their shoulders uh, and have a very well earned break or indeed see friends and families who many haven't seen for a long time. I was talking to Simon Calder, the travel expert, earlier on on the show, and he had a long list of people from the travel industry uh, who said this is too little, too late, it's not enough, uh, and the travel industry is really going to struggle. I mean, these are the people who should be positive about what you've just done, uh, and uh, they're not. Yeah, look, I mean, if I was in the travel industry, or indeed even as Transport Secretary, of course, you want the whole world to be opened up. Of course, any responsible government's got to put that aside. Uh, the, everything we've been through with constant lockdowns over nearly a year and a half, lots of people coming forward, nearly nine out of 10 adults now come forward for their uh, vaccinations and everything that we've gone through, we can't throw that all away. So we're having to pace it and we're having to pace it depending on lots of factors, including yes, then, the extent to but, which those countries are vaccinated. But their argument is that um, their airline figures in terms of numbers is 16% what it was pre-pandemic. In Germany, it's 60%. In France, it's 48%. Other countries are opening up and their travel industry is flourishing and, and we're going to struggle. Well, look, I, I think that most people watching this will be saying, look, we'll be, everything we've gone through, whatever we do, let's not throw it away. I think we can all kind of agree on that. And that means we do. We have had to be cautious. Having said that, this latest set of changes uh, simplifies the, the system, brings quite a lot of countries into green and amber, which means you can come back and you don't need to quarantine. And, but at the same time, we've got to keep a very close eye on the danger. The one thing now which could create a problem would be variants being imported which escape the vaccine in other words you know everyone's had the vaccine what happens if there's a variant which escapes it so it's right to be cautious about it at the same time i think we're moving to what will now be you know the, the world position which is that fully vaccinated people are able to travel probably with a couple of tests to make sure that they're okay before they leave and, and when they get back right and is that variant uh, problem um, the reason why Mexico, which is a, a big destination, isn't it, for British holiday mm. makers? I think there's maybe five to 6,000 people, Brits, over there at the moment on holiday. Of course, now for them, their holidays are in chaos because they have gone over there, possibly double vaccinated. They're, that country has now been put on the red list by the government, which means that by Sunday, if they can't get back in the next few days, they will have to quarantine, won't they, for 10 days when they get back here. And the cost of quarantine... The government's just put up to like £2,285. Where do you expect families to find that sort of money from at the drop of a hat? Yes, I mean, with a country like um, Mexico, what the uh, body that advises ministers, that's called the Joint Biosecurity Centre, are looking at uh, include things like their own level of vaccination in that country and therefore the way in which variants or the virus itself is spreading. So it's not just a question of us being vaccinated, the place you go to uh, also needs to be largely vaccinated. That's, of course, why places in Europe are opening up, because they've caught up with the vaccination um, programme that Mexico um, hasn't. So, yes, I, look, I, I, I appreciate absolutely how 
much of a pain this is, how difficult it is. It's one of the reasons why we've been very cautious about travel up until this point. Um, and people will now be um, trying to come back. Yeah. The, the numbers are not uh, vast by comparison to, for example, numbers that we've had to pat repatriate from elsewhere yeah. in the past. Um, um, so I hope that people are able to uh, make it back. Just um, before but, you, yeah, we're just slightly running out of time. So I just want to quickly ask a question sure. that's come from some viewers, actually, which is about India um, now being put on the amber list, I yeah. think, and uh, Turkey still being on the red list. Now, lots of people would rather go on holiday to Turkey and um, whatever than India, perhaps, uh, at the moment. So there's a lot of sort of frustration and people are wondering whether that's a, a political or an economic decision rather than actually based on the, the science uh, of what's happening in those individual countries. Just briefly, yeah. is there a way that you can explain that to our viewers sure. as to no. why India is now open and Turkey is still closed. Sure, yeah. No, well, the first thing I should say is all of these decisions are always based on the science. So what we'll do is ask the Joint Biosecurity Centre to look at it. They look at not just the prevalence but also the number of people who've been vaccinated, also the variants in that particular country, also the data and whether it's simply uploaded in an internationally recognised uh, format. There's something called GISAID, which is the, the place where countries should upload their data. Uh, where countries do that, it makes it easier to bring them onto the AMBER list. So uh, it will be a combination of those things that have prevented so far uh, Turkey appearing on the uh, AMBER list. And I hope it won't be too long, but I don't know. We'll have to wait for the Joint Biosecurity Centre to advise us. But the whole difference between Turkey and India, it just sort of points to a, a bit of a chaotic approach. And rather than leading, you're, it feels like you're you're, you're listening to the loudest voice and being led by that. I mean, you think about the Amber watch list, that seemed to disappear. Uh, the Amber, Amber Plus, is that now gone? There are so many things that we've had during, uh, during COVID that the government sort of appears to be flip-flopping between. I mean, that's, no, look, I don't agree it, with it's that. It's pretty chaotic, all, isn't it? No, I, I don't agree with that at all, because, you know, there is no rule book for dealing with, um, you know, textbook for dealing with coronavirus. Uh, yes, we, we've had to learn as we've gone along. And you mentioned the, the Amber Plus, the French list. Well, scientists were concerned about the beta variant. Fortunately, the beta variant has been in, in decline in France in the last three weeks. And we've learned more about it that enables you to move to the next uh, level and simplify the system. But it is a question of uh, following the the science, and I'm afraid we d we don't have a sort of you know a uh, a, a sort of um, you know way to look into the future. We have to follow whatever the coronavirus itself is doing, and then provide advice or, or rules which best fit that. And uh, you know that's what we're trying to do. It's what we're trying to do um, throughout. I doubt there's a perfect way to do this. Uh, but we're doing it to the best of okay. uh, our ability and, and in line with the best international science as well. And just before you go, a brief word on um, over 12s getting the vaccine. It's obviously opening up to 16 and 17 year olds uh, now. Um, I mean, that's inevitable, isn't it? It's, it's just a matter of time. And, and, how, and how soon do you think over 12s will, will be offered the vaccine? I think we've been really fortunate in the UK to have the, the Joint uh, Committee on Vaccines and Immunisation. They're the people who advised us all the way throughout this. They're the people who got from Margaret Keenan, the very first woman to receive a vaccine in this country. Um, they have looked at the data all the way through and they've now said they're satisfied with 16 and 17 year olds. We will need to wait for them to look at the data for 12 plus. Um, as, as you say, um, they will be looking at that very, very uh, closely. But I actually think we've been very fortunate to be brilliantly advised by our scientists and have had a government who okay. wanted to take the scientific advice rather than make it up themselves. Yeah, Grant Shapps, Transport Secretary, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.